Okay, welcome to uh, Half Five Live, or the 5.30, or hashtag 5.30 Live. Uh, again, we've got um, uh, Luke, LW Digital, and myself, and we are talking YouTube ads. Uh, what is it? Ad types, targeting, drive sales and leads, replacements and budget, the normal stuff. Um, it's not something that I've done, and uh, Luke knows my um, comments around YouTube and ads and things like that, but we'll cover that. Uh, so, Luke, go on then, kick us off. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, uh, is this the last one before Christmas, just to let people know as well. It is. Before yeah. Christmas, last one. Yeah. There we go. We better make it a good one then. Uh, so this week, YouTube video ads. Um, essentially, what these are in the title are video ads across Google's video platform of YouTube. Okay. Um, and with YouTube now, it's such a massive growing platform. If you think about every device that people have, tablets, phones, and now your smart TVs, YouTube is an app on these and used by people for all sorts. So you've got, you know, educational things, instructional things, but also in people's downtime. Um, so these adverts are really trying to get in, in front of people within their social spare time. Um, when they're doing and they're really good because you know necessarily people won't be searching on google in their spare time unless they need to whereas on youtube they'll be browsing enjoying their spare time and you can get in front of them uh, in this occasion so they are really really effective in that sense to get a, a large reach and audience um youtube actually works similar to google search ads in the sense that it takes people's search signals um, from their search activity their youtube search activity and their google maps activity and puts all these together to determine who to show adverts to. So it's exactly the same as like we've talked about in previous weeks, um, you know, with the Google search and also with the display ads, taking those signals people are giving from their online behavior um, and using those to target them on YouTube. And like we've talked about before previously, we go back to the three main purposes of advertising really. You can use YouTube for creating awareness, um, driving consideration, and then also at the end of that sales funnel, driving sales and leads. Um, and if you get your targeting right and using all those signals, it can really, really affect it. Yeah, I mean, the one, the one thing I've noticed is that, that, that there are some absolutely really, really effective ads on there. Um, yeah. there, are, there are also some shite ones, but, um, but but that's probably just around personal interest. Is um, I think I had one where um, they, they shout, I just think I said to you, they shouted uh, two words, stop scrolling, right, was, uh, right at yeah. a high-pitched voice. And if you've got earplugs in, it really like blew your eardrums out and i just thought mm, i just some some things i just think yeah just think about the audience and think about what you're doing but that's the content isn't it it is and that's the, the content and you know probably in a in a, um another 530 live we might go into what makes good content and come back to all these different platforms that might be a good one to touch on mm. uh, with with what you said about that two second thing on youtube more than any platform i'd say because it is visual and a uh, video You've got to have your hook in the first three seconds. You've got to get someone's attention. So like you described there, that's not the best way to do it. Shouting in someone's ear is not great. But having something which relates to somebody um, and you know makes their ears sort of prick up and say, oh, I have been searching for this. Why is this advert come up on my screen? That's what you want to be doing before they get to that five second window when they can then go and skip. And we'll get into that because with different uh, YouTube advertising types varies in terms of what you can and can't skip. And so we'll get into those. But yeah, your content, like you just said, really, really important. Um, so before we move on to the ad types, just want to mention the different bidding methods on YouTube that can be uh, quite effective. So like we said before, you, on Google search, you have cost per click, don't you? That's your, your normal yeah. method. Um, but with um, YouTube advertising, there's actually four different methods that you can do. So the first one is uh, cost per view. So this is where you are literally doing what it says in the name. You're paying per view on your video. Now, this isn't going to be as uh, um, generically as expensive as cost per click because as you can imagine you can reach thousands of people on youtube um, but it is on the same metric of for every view you will pay a certain price um you've got something called cpm as well now this is the cost to reach a thousand people so this is also similar to what we talked about with facebook so that this is sending it to a broader audience and you're then paying for reaching a certain amount of people essentially um next you've got your cost per day now depending on what advert type you use on youtube the cost per day will be uh, one that's not on a video ad, it'll be a display ad, but it'll, you'll pay just for a set day or a set couple of days for advertising on YouTube just for that day. So rather than setting a campaign over a month or a few weeks, if there's a certain day of the year where you really think it'd be important to market your product or service, you can pay and just advertise on that day. And that cost per day rate, again, that's just um, what you would put into Google based on your budget. And the last one is target cost per acquisition. And this is using Google's machine learning AI, as we've sort of touched on in previous weeks using all those intent signals and put in a desired value that you want to pay per conversion. And this can be really, really effective if you're getting a lot of data out of YouTube and Google advertising 
and working out how much you want to pay and what's effective for your business per conversion and getting it, uh, taking advantage of this can be really, really great. Okay, okay. That's good. Yeah, it's really interesting. So with the ad types, you've got four main ad types. Okay, and we're going to breeze through these. You've got skippable in-stream ads, non-skippable in-stream ads, video discovery ads, and non-video ads. So we'll go into them in more detail. Now, the first one, skippable in-stream video ads, says what it, is what it says on the tin again. These are the ones that come up on YouTube. They're known as pre-roll or mid-roll. So they come in, in the start of a video or in the middle of a video. And these are the ones that after five seconds, you can hit that brilliant skip button and get rid of them straight away. Yeah. Um, 20 of them I had in a video the other day. <laughs> yeah, you said to me, you were watching some of them the other day and there was 20 mid-rolls in there, which is very extreme, but hey-ho, that can be annoying. Um, but with this, it's actually, you might think, oh, people can skip, so this isn't going to be an, a valuable advertising method for my business. But actually, there's something called true view within YouTube. Now, a true view is you only pay for somebody who has a true view in terms of who stays on and watches that advert after the five seconds. Okay. So if they skip off the advert at five seconds, you don't pay for that person because it's not worthwhile and Google knows that. Whereas if they stay and see, like, you've got your hook, you've hooked them for those five seconds, they want to find out more, you only then pay for the people that stay on. So that's really cost effective in terms of you know those people that are seeing these ads are fully switched on because they have the option to get rid of it and they're not doing that. So that can be really, really good. Um, so yeah, like I said, you'll pay when they're at least 12 seconds long and you pay when somebody watches the first 30 seconds or the whole video um, or in, they interact by clicking. So if we had a, a call to action on the ad and they clicked after 10 seconds, but they took the action you wanted, you'd pay. Whereas if they watched it up until 30 seconds, then you'd pay for that true review. So it is a really cost-effective oh, okay. method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cost-effective method moving forward. Um, next, you've got your non-skippable ads. So based on Google research, around 76% of people report they automatically skip an ad. Like, like you said to me earlier, you will get rid of that advert if it's not something you're interested in straight away, finger on the button, get rid of it. So 76% of people, according to you, would do that straight away. So that, for you, that in-stream uh, in true view advertising won't be good, you know, if that's something that a lot of your customers are doing. So you want to go for this non-skippable uh, option. Now, with this, this is where you're aiming to get a lot of brand awareness because you're making people stay on that video to watch it, okay? Um, so with people that are looking to make a conversion or already considering you, this advertising method might not be the best because, you know, if they're interested, they'll stay on the video and watch. If they're not, they'll skip. Whereas if you're trying to drive awareness, you're sort of making sure that, okay, well, you're going to see this video because I've targeted you based on the interests. And I know you're sort of interested in my products or service and you now know who I am. So this is a really, really effective method for those kinds of people. Um, and this, again, like we touched on content earlier, this is really important that your content, you know, is going to keep people engaged for 15 to 20 seconds. Because if you're paying for this advertising method, and making people watch it and they're switching off after that hook, but they've got to sit through 15 seconds anyway, you're essentially wasting your advertising budget. So your content here needs to be really, really, really good um, and needs to keep people engaged. And like I said, that's you've got to make sure 15 seconds is a long time if you're bored. And it is, yeah. It's surprising. We don't really have a grasp on time. 15 no. seconds is a long time. Yeah, um, and uh, as with anything, I think with any of these avatars, you really have got to make sure your content is is super hot, really, and, and really yeah. draws them in. You can't skimp on on the content at all, really. Definitely not. Definitely not. And with this method, you're you're using that CPM here, so you're going to be paying for the cost per thousand views. So you know if that content's not engaging, and you've got ten, fifteen, twenty thousand people that are not engaging your advert, you're essentially burning away your advertising budget. So that's not something we want to be doing, obviously. No. The type of um, non-skippable ad, which I just want to touch on, called bumper ads. Now, these are just six seconds long, and these are like snappy little uh, videos that you can create. And they're just that six seconds. Get your message across really quickly. Um, but actually, with these, what you can do on YouTube is sort of build a story. So you can have one bumper ad for six seconds long. Once somebody sees that, the next on their view a YouTube video, they'll see your next bumper ad for six seconds. And you can sort of educate them along this little journey uh, all the way to where you want to get them. And then you'd send a, uh, an ad directly that, you know, driving that conversion and sale and they're right at the end of the story. You know they are because they've managed to get to that point, which is more back end stuff, which you have to set up. But that's how it works. Your little sequence, six seconds. And then, yeah, you've got a, a nice little story built out where you've educated someone all the way along that journey and then they're taking the action that you want at the end. No, I have I have not come across one of them as yet. I, no. I don't go on YouTube. It's generally listening to music uh, that I'm, yeah. I'm doing uh, or 
the YouTube channel and I'm looking for how to's on things like that. And I've not come across one of those yet, um, to be honest. They are quite niche. And they're, yeah, a lot of people like those longer ones that they might go for a non skippable ad. So let's keep someone engaged for 30 seconds. But if your content's not great or you've got good content, but it's not going to keep them engaged for 15 seconds, a bumper ad might be great. A little short message, six seconds. People are engaged probably for that six seconds if they can't skip at that point, you know. Uh, and you've got them there and then. And then, like I said, you can build a story with these and educating people gradually rather than forcing 30 seconds of content on them in one video. So yeah, that could yeah. be really good. Cool. Quite like that. I quite like that idea. It's quite a good idea. Okay. Yeah, it is, it is a nice one. Um, the third one is called discovery ads. Okay, so these work similar to Google search advertising. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world, okay, behind Google search. Okay, so if you think about the amount of data that they're going through on YouTube search every day, there's a lot of data there. Um, and with these adverts, what you'll do is if somebody searches for, let's say, a cooking video, um, they're searching for a specific cooking video and your advert will appear as if it was uh, an organic search result at the top of the search results on YouTube. Yeah. OK, so that not necessarily, you know, you're not necessarily the best video or the most viewed in terms of what the uh, we all know as marketers and, and the customers are looking for. But you'll be appearing at the top of those search results, just like you do on Google search ads. So that's giving you that awareness for the people that are searching for certain keywords, certain video types, etc. So this is a sort of method that if you're worried about people might skip my ad or I don't know what method. If you like the Google search advertising, you've had benefit from that before. Try these discovery ads because they can be equally as effective. Yeah, I, I, to be fair, that is one where I have, when I've searched for something, that has come up at the top and I have actually clicked them. Yeah, so. and, and with these, it's like you said, you've actually clicked it. So you're appearing in those search results and you're giving somebody the option to click on your advert then. And if they do, you know they're already interested straight away. Yeah. Whereas if you're putting an advert out in one of the other formats, um, you're not necessarily, well, they're not, are they? They're, they're looking at a video and then your advert to appear in. So this could be a really cost-effective method of finding an audience of people who you know will be really interested in your product and service because they have had to click on it physically themselves. Yeah. And not they've been given that choice. So that's a really interesting point that you made there. So you you've clicked yourself after searching yeah, yeah. for something. Yeah. It's off easy. It's, I've, there you I've go. Number of occasions just be, just because the image that they've used has has has, has intrigued me and drawn me in, and I've thought, oh, okay, yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a look because it's been asso it's associated with what I'm searching for, so I might as well click it anyway. Exactly, exactly. And that, like I said, they're really, really effective because you're in the market for that sort of video yeah. and it's been presented yeah. to you and you've clicked it. Yeah. Spot on. Um, and the last one, Adam, is, is non-video ads. So we actually did a, a last one last week. It was on display ads, our last 530 Live. And these are essentially YouTube's version of display ads. Uh, and they'll appear on the right-hand side of the screen in image and text um, format. And they'll have a call to action, um, depending on what sort of campaign you're doing, to drive you away from YouTube to another website. Now, again, there's lots of benefits of this, having that awareness of your business while people are searching on YouTube in their spare time. They might finish a video and look for the next video to move on to down the right-hand side on the sidebar and then see your advert for a product and they think, oh, that's interesting. We'll, we'll go and view uh, and take you off to your website then at that point. Um, but also you've got in-video overlay ads. So unlike display ads being at the side of the screen, you can also do an in-video overlay ad, which essentially is a floating banner which appears during the YouTube video that people can click off. Now, similar to the skip ads in terms of, yeah, you can just skip them and exit them off. But if you're watching a video and at a certain point in the video, this ad pops up, you're going to take notice of it because it's just, it's appeared on your screen straight away. Um, and yeah, like I said, that's really, really effective, you know, in terms of people look at it straight away. They have to look at it because they'll be like, oh, it's a surprise that this ad has now come up. And to click off it, they have to go onto the ad. Um, so this could be a really effective method as well, uh, something to consider alongside display ads on YouTube. I must admit, on those ones, I because I've had I've had I've had one of those today actually um, when I was looking at something, popped up, and your eye does come down to it, and you do clock it what it is because you have to yeah. go for the little X as well that's minute in in one of the corners, exactly. and you're looking at the advert, and it does. I found it not so intrusive as the skippable ads because yeah it stopped yeah. your video and they're talking at you whereas the that these um display ads just pop up your video still carries on until you click it off um so i thought they were i thought they were a little bit less in less intrusive actually into, into what you were doing but you've still got to take an action and look at it and, and click it off as well so you're always looking at it 
exactly in an ideal world as well like you said uh, about that in terms of you having to click off it you would use both display ads and these in video overlay ads so you would be having that side the right hand side of the screen taken up there but also having it then appearing on the video in case somebody doesn't look to the right because you know myself if i'm on youtube essentially i know what i'm looking for i'll search and find that video so i might not look on the right hand side but then if you've got these in video overlay ads too you're going to be appearing on the video and you're going to be seen in that in that context too mm -hmm. um so that's all for those ads but like i said i think there's a good range of different advertising types on youtube that different business uh, businesses can take advantage of uh, there. Now, with our targeting option, this is going to be quite quick because we did actually touch on these in detail last week yeah. on display. So we don't want to, uh, you know, necessarily bore people. People can go back and check out the display ads to find out some really in-depth targeting options. Um, I'm just going to mention them briefly. So the first one um, to generate awareness would be using an affinity audience and. People within an affinity audience are people that have um, a passion based on their searching data on Google around a certain area or certain uh, topic. Okay, so um, if we use, let's just use a cooking example again. I think last week I used a sports one actually. Um, so you can target, for example, sports and fitness, people who are into their sports or their sports fans, but then also specifically a sport, so tennis enthusiasts, okay, because they have a passion and they've previously been searching for things around this. Now, if you want to go to that next stage and you want to target people who are looking for your product and services, you might want to then look for something called an in-market audience, which we touched on last week. And these are the people that have previously searched for something and have the passion, but they're currently doing it as well. So these are the people you really know are in the market, as it says right now, uh, around a certain area based on their search history and search data. Uh, and you really want to get in front of these people because you know that these are the ones that essentially are looking to, to purchase and buy. Just on the tipping point of making that decision to buy. Exactly. exactly. And, and, you know, sending them an advert on YouTube, for example, that educates them could be the next stage that makes them move along that that sales funnel. Again, that guru quote, we should have a little a little, t little tick for everyone we say every week if we're yeah. trying to avoid it. But that, that sales funnel, moving someone on that customer journey, you know, really, really getting them to to just take that next step and convert could be really, really good. Um, and then, like if I said, we you Michelle can- Keo here, she'd, she'd be shouting bingo for all the <laughs> key words uh, or the, uh, the jargon that we're bringing out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, we really try and avoid those terms, but sometimes it can't be helped. Um, but and then last one, you can create your own uh, custom intent audiences or custom affinity audiences. So Google has a range of preset ones that you can target your YouTube adverts at or your display adverts at, as we touched last week. But if you know that people who you want to target are searching for certain keywords, are searching or viewing websites on certain URLs, you can create these audiences yourself based on your knowledge of your industry. And people do know what their customers search mm. for really good if there's not an option on google for what you're looking for for your industry specifically go and we can create one yourself and really really narrow down your targeting on that and that can be really effective um and you know at the last stage of the funnel as we talk about every week is driving sales and leads and to a lot of businesses this is really important and this is where remarketing and retargeting comes in um and last week again we touched about moving people on the sales journey educating them etc etc but as well as targeting previous website visitors with the youtube ads what you can actually do is target your um, previous video viewers. So this is a sort of a traditional retargeting method in the sense that, you know, people have viewed your content, so you know about them. So you're going to send them another ad. But having that video element, like I touched out earlier with the bumper ads, actually, you can sort of create a story or you know what they've seen and sort of educate them along that next step. So for example, if you have a YouTube um, video about a certain product, um, and you know on the side that you might, uh, you regularly upsell another product after someone's used this product, you might then send them, okay, they've viewed a video about product A. I know they're interested in product A. I'm going to send them a video ad now for product B because I know they're in that space and people regularly convert for both products. So that can be really, really effective targeting people based on uh, their views uh, on, on certain videos. Mm. The, uh, I was going to ask you, is, are, there, are there any, there must be some stats, I would imagine, I don't know whether they're really available, in around saying, okay, we've done these ads within YouTube, and then we've retargeted, what the percentage sort of like take up is, is with retargeting? Um, yeah, well, well, the, the rule of thumb across all platforms really is video content is the most engaging and works the most uh, and is the most effective. You know, on Facebook ads, for example, if you can engage someone in a video ad, they're more likely to convert, that's just through the, all the days that Facebook. So I'd imagine that YouTube is, is the same in terms of Google ads, actually. Um, and if you think about a video as well, 
compared to an image or a text ad, the amount of information you can get in six seconds or 30 seconds, like we said, it is a long time. So you could really say something in that time to uh, alleviate a worry that somebody has previously had, and that's why they didn't take an action or educate them as to why you're better than your competitors, for example. Um, and using that time effectively could be the difference between making a conversion. So uh, like I said, across the, across the board on all platforms, video is the most effective, but I would imagine that if you get your YouTube campaigns right, they will be really effective as well. Yeah, I, I, you, you'd said before uh, like the uh, effectiveness of the uh, YouTube and in particular yeah. video. And I think I'd see, I think we mentioned last week is that I'd seen where Facebook were actually sort of, uh, when I was doing uh, a video uh, yeah. after, I think we'd done uh, one of the lives, they were saying there, oh, you know, do a three second intro to the video and make it different. I think it was part of their creator studio uh, stuff and hints and tips they were saying. Uh, and they gave you an example of one. So this, this, there was a girl that was, that was about to do her video, but it, it skipped into this three second intro where she did something completely different to get the person's attention. Yeah. To draw them in. Um, and I, I thought that was, that. yeah. That's that thing that we were around about again. Yeah. Really, really. So it's, uh, it, yeah, I think the video side is, I'd, I'd uh, definitely, uh, I, I mean, I know the effectiveness of video against the uh, image on Facebook with what I've done. I've had more, yeah. more uh, uptake on video than, than static image. Absolutely. Um, and while we're on the, the, the effectiveness of video, again, we touched on this last week, but it's slightly different for YouTube, it's obviously because it is video and display ads. Um, we just want to touch on effectively targeting certain positions or placements as they're known. Um, so last week we went through these um, in terms of websites, apps, YouTube channels, and YouTube videos. Um, and with a video ad, it works exactly the same. You choose what websites within Google's video network that you want your adverts to appear on, because you don't have to just advertise on uh, YouTube with these YouTube video ads, you can send them to external uh, websites and placements across uh, YouTube and Google's networks as well. So there might be other websites that have video platforms on there where you can run the ads on there. You've got apps. I'm sure people know that when you download a free app, a lot of the time there'll be 30 second adverts that you can't skip um, on that free ad. Again, Google might have a relationship with some app providers. But more specifically as well, certain YouTube channels and YouTube videos, you know, like we said about the cooking example, um, if you have a product around cooking, you would want your video appearing on channels that people are watching because they have an interest in that, in that uh, topic. And the same for videos, you know, if you've got a product that can add something to the content within the video, um, or it's going to work really well with a product within that video as well. Targeting them specifically is a really cost effective way because you know that the people within that YouTube channel that are watching it or within that YouTube video are going to be interested or more interested than people that are going on, let's say a sport channel, for example, watching sport highlights. They're not the sort of people you want to be targeting. Your audience is within those cooking channels. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, there's just one more thing, and we didn't touch on it last week, and just wanted to say it as well. Um, so you can use these within display advertising as well. Um, things called topics and devices. So obviously a device, you've got your phones, mobile phones, TVs, like we said, but other Google devices as well, like Chromecast. Now, you might have uh, a certain marketing strategy that you think works better on computers or works better on mobile devices or works better in somebody's living room, for example. You know, if you're... Um, advert is aimed at parents, let's say, of children, the chances are if they're watching YouTube, they might be watching it on their main TV in the morning with their parents or in the evening in their downtime and the parents will be with them. So targeting certain TV devices with a campaign targeting certain placements like children's advert, uh, children's channels, for example, like we just touched on, could be a really effective way because you know that the parents are going to be in the room with the children at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and then with the smartphones, if it's somebody on the on the commute in the morning, let's say, if you want to target specifically people on mobile, because you know at these times of the day, people are on the train going to work and the commuters are, are for example, um, your main target audience, collect, selecting specifically mobile devices to target could be a really effective way there. Because I know when I was commuting as well to London on the train for two hours, YouTube was the only way to get me through, YouTube and Netflix. And the amount of adverts I've seen there throughout my day um, for certain products, you know, flasks to get on the train, all sorts. So it can be a really effective uh, method to target. So just wanted to mention that because some people don't know you can do that. You know, you don't have to target everything and everyone. You can be really specific about it. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
And the last one was just topics. Um, similar to the audience uh, thing we just talked about, but this is more broad range. So if you have a specific product, uh, again, we'll use the sport example, that is around tennis in general. You can target that topic around tennis. You know, it doesn't have to be people that are really, really into it. So tennis enthusiasts that are really into tennis. It could be a product that applies from beginner to expert level and it just within people within that certain topic. So you don't have to be as narrow all the time. You can, if you think it'd be effective to raise awareness for your uh, your product or service and you have the advertising budget to do so, go rather on topics and try and build your campaign up on a broader, wider level and then scale it down once you've worked out what audiences work well for you. Yeah, okay. That's interesting. That's top. I think that's it, mate. I think that's the... Uh, is, really yeah. Is there anything on budgeting we need to cover or is it just similar, very similar to what we were talking around within Google anyway? Yeah, I mean, the way you look at it, we say with search ads, don't we, have a budget that you want to spend within the month and you know that's based on a cost per click method. Now, depending on what ads you, uh, you choose for Google will depend on what bidding methods that you are forced to use essentially because, you know, like we said, the, the non-skippable ones are paid for reaching a certain amount of 1,000 people whereas your true view, giving people the option to skip, are going to be on a sort of cost per view uh, yeah. basis. Um, so have an idea of how much you want to spend and what sort of ads work, will work well for your budget. But um, again, it's just about knowing what you can and can't spend. And you will have within Google a daily limit and your campaign limit. And that will be all predetermined with your agency or with your internal marketing team. You know what you can and can't spend. But just make sure you have in your mind what you want to spend every day, what you want to spend for the month. Um, and if you get to a more advanced level, how much you want to pay, like we said, per acquisition or per conversion, that could be a really good number to know. But without knowing um, how effective certain adverts are, without having a certain amount of data, these tactics aren't going to be bene really beneficial to you at early stages. So really, it's about knowing how much you're willing to spend um, per results for your daily and your campaign budget. Superb. Excellent. Well, thank you very much again, once again. And as, as uh, Luke said, this will be the last one before... I'm just checking over to see if there's uh, any comments or isn't. It's been the last one uh, before Christmas, so uh, I, we will wish everybody uh, a happy Christmas, the new year. Um, I may come on live and drunk at some point. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. Um, again, thank you very much, Luke. Uh, superb. See you after Christmas. Yeah.